Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the more advanced layer blending options in Affinity Photo 2. I've already looked at combining image layers using masks in a previous video, and I'm going to take the same image and turn it into a textured illustration using free to use images from the stock panel in Affinity Photo. So this is the photo I'm starting from, and it already has a number of different layers and masks where I combine the original image of the fishing boat on a shingle beach with a new sky. The extra work I'm doing on this photo will just go on top of these. Sometimes having lots of image layers can get confusing, and there is a way to flatten down into a single layer if you're sure you don't need to make any more changes. First, make sure all the layers you want to merge are visible, then simply use the Layer Merge Visible menu command. This actually keeps all the layers, but adds a new one where they're all merged together. You can keep this new layer and delete all the others. So let's get started. I want to add a female portrait to this image to create a kind of impressionistic collage. And rather than searching through all my own photos to find an example, I have plenty of choices right at my fingertips, thanks to Affinity Photo 2's stock panel. This displays free to use stock photos from two different sites, Pixabay and Pexels. I'm going to choose Pixabay on the drop down menu. I can now search for the term female portrait and browse matching images from the Pixabay stock library. When I find one I think is suitable, I can simply drag it off the panel and onto my image. When you do this, you'll see a pop-up notification telling you who supplied the image. The Pixabay terms and conditions don't insist that you credit the photographer, but it's good form to credit both the author and Pixabay. Though this image is by Pexels, which is the other free stock site option, so the actual photographer in this case isn't identified. By default, stock images are added at their actual size on a new layer. I can use the Move tool to drag the photo roughly into position, drag on the corner handles to resize it, and use the Rotate gadget on the top handle to change the angle slightly. It's not looking very promising so far because the portrait image covers up the photo of the boat below and doesn't blend in at all, which is where the blend modes come in. If you select a layer and then look at the top of the layers panel, you'll see that there is an opacity slider, which I'll come back to in a minute, and a drop down blend mode menu. By default, the blend mode is set to normal, which means the current layer simply covers up what's below. But if I scroll down through the options, you'll see the blending effect changes with each option. Effectively, blend modes change the way the pixels in the selected layer interact with those in the layer or layers below. Different blend modes can offer dramatically different effects. For this portrait layer, I think the linear light blend mode works best. It's far from being a finished image yet, but the portrait is starting to blend with the image below a little more effectively. It's still a little too dark and dense, but I can reduce the layer opacity to say 75% to improve that. There's a long way to go though. I need to find a way to tie in these layers more effectively so that they appear part of the same image. And I think my next step could go a long way towards that. I want to make my image look as if it is painted onto weather beaten wooden board. And for this, I need to go back to the stock panel to find a suitable texture. I can simply search for the word texture. I like this one, which is by T0113K on Pixabay. I dragged it onto my image and it's clearly too small, but that's easily fixed by selecting the move tool and dragging on the corner handles to resize it and on the center to move it into position. As with the portrait image, this new layer covers up what's below, so I'm going to blend it in exactly the same way, but using a different blend mode. After trying a few, I think the hard light mode works best. You can see how the texture overlays the image layers below and how the warm brown color of this layer overlays the colors too and produces a much more cohesive looking image and color palette. Again, now I can experiment with the opacity, but this time I think it's best left at 100%. I still have a problem though. The edges of the portrait layer are very obvious and I need to work out a way to blend them in. This is easy to do. 
First, I need to select that layer and create a new layer mask for it using the button on the bottom of the layers panel. Now, making sure that the new mask is selected in the layers panel, I can switch to Affinity Photo's gradient tool, then use the pop-up type menu on the top toolbar to choose elliptical. I also need to make sure I'm using a plain white to black gradient. So I need to click on the gradient swatch on the top toolbar, click on the gray end stop to select it, and then click the small black button next to the eyedropper just above to set this end stop to a solid black. My portrait image disappears, but that's fine. All I need to do is drag out an elliptical gradient from the center where it was and it will reappear. I can drag the control handles to change the size and angle of the elliptical mask and its position too. My aim is to fade out the portrait before the edges of that layer become visible. And that's my image finished, though there's plenty more to experiment with if I want to. For example, I can try changing the blend mode for the top layer to get some radically different effects. Some are a lot more successful than others, but that's part of the fun. And it all depends on the properties of the images you're trying to blend. With blend modes, you can achieve results that go beyond regular photography to produce effects and artworks that are closer to graphic design and illustration than regular photography. But that's the power of Affinity Photo. It's a crossover tool that can enhance and perfect photographic images, but also take them into new creative areas. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Blend modes are an extremely effective way to create striking graphic effects and Affinity Photo stock panel is a fantastic source of images to do it with. Thanks for watching and see you next time.